Welcome to Artistic Adventures and a really long video. This one's about 50 some minutes, I think. But I wanted to make this whole outfit in one video and get her get her done. So that's what we're gonna do. So if you guys are ready to go to the Copacabana, let's go make this outfit. So Jackie, one of my subscribers, asked me to make a dress for a fashion royalty doll. The closest I have is this doll. It is an integrity doll which makes fashion royalty, but it is color infusion, and it's the uh, Zara Wade doll that I bought on eBay, and she had no clothes, and I've been meaning to make her some clothes, so let's do it. I love these uh, materials that I pulled out of my stash that I have of little scraps and, and uh, different materials, and I did have a pattern that is for a Barbie or uh, fashion royalty type doll, so I started looking at that, and I thought, okay, but that's kind of boring, and I really want this doll to have something special, something really out there, because I think she's really beautiful, and she seems exotic to me in some way. So then I started thinking, ooh, you know, these colors look like something you would go out to merengue, or do the cha-cha, or whatever, maybe even a little salsa. So... um I decided to make her a dress that kind of reminds me a little bit of the 30s, um, some dresses, ball, ball gown type dresses you might have seen back then or whatever. And also with the bralette that I'm going to make, uh, suggestive of like the Victoria's Secret fantasy bras, you know, that they have that uh, I kind of want to peek, peek out of this outfit. Uh, she does have a nice torso that has uh, the markings of uh, some abdominal exercising. So I think she'll look great in this. So I'm kind of going to use the same technique that I used for um, the bustier on a previous doll. I'm using some very thin chiffon just to keep the tape from sticking to the doll and to back it up. And then I'm going to use tape to create the outline of a brassiere and then we'll embellish it. Okay, so I'm doing this a little bit slower than usual in normal speed so you can see what I'm doing. I cut two slits on either side of the tape that's going to go over the breast portion and that's how I get the cup. I just uh, use those two slits and overlap them on either, either side and you'll notice I left about maybe a fourth of an inch in between them and so you don't come to a complete point and uh, just overlap those on either side and that gives you the sort of cup cup structure. And that looks like that fits pretty good. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And I'm using this, uh, it's like for painting masking tape like you would use to uh, mask off like trim so you don't get paint on it. Uh, it's kind of nice because it doesn't stick. I mean it sticks but then it's easy to remove if you have to, and I did have to do some adjusting here to get uh, a really nice tight fit around her breast. And once I got that part done, that's really the hardest part of this is, is to get those, those cups to fit. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's hard when you're making outfits to, to get that shape because you want to get the indention between the breasts too. And uh, that's kind of a technique that I use for bustiers or brassiers or whatever sort of thing. And I'm just putting a piece of tape all the way around to complete uh, the structure of this bralette. And once I get that done, then I can kind of cut it off of the doll and uh, cut it into the shapes that I, that I want. Uh, kind of did a little bit of preliminary cutting here just to make sure that I had it uh, you know, the right place in the front and the, uh, didn't go too deep or whatever. So I'm not making it extremely deeply cut or whatever, because like I said, this is going to actually show. It's going to be um, really part of the dress. Uh, and Jackie, I, I'm sorry if this is not exactly what you had in mind, but my imagination kind of went wild. This is yeah, not really a typical dress, but uh, just showing you some things that you could do and uh, you know I never work with patterns anyway so I do have that one pattern uh, that it's like a, a bodice of a dress that you could just add like a 
gathered skirt to or whatever. So I'm just kind of trimming this up now. Uh, again, you don't really have to trim it up that much because I'm going to cover it with fabric. I just want to make sure I have the shape right and that it's pretty much symmetrical because we don't want to have uh, lopsided breast looking things. <laughs> so uh, now just trying it on the doll again, make sure that um, it fits and to kind of get a sense of how much fabric I'm going to need in the back because I have to overlap the back for a closure. I'm just going to use a small piece of Velcro for that. And I think this looks pretty good. I think it's going to work. Lots of things you could do with that. You could put a ruffle under it or lace or all, all different kinds of things if you wanted to or even attach it to uh, fabric. Now here I'm using fray check on the edges of this metallic material because it does fray pretty well and I'm going to use this uh, to cover the bralette. This is going to be the uh, this uh, you know obviously is going to show and that flowered material is actually pretty sheer which is why I couldn't really make the whole dress out of that anyway but uh, with this because it doesn't show through I don't really have to worry about painting the uh, uh, tape if I had used something sheer I'd want to paint it the color of the fabric so I'm just going to put the glue right there down the middle and over just the top of the bralette because I want to work on this in, in sections. First of all because this material tends to not stick very well. It's kind of stiff and I, I ended up having to hold it down a little bit while it glued. So I couldn't really glue the whole thing at one time. And also I'm kind of doing this in pieces. I'm doing it in two pieces just so I can make sure and get that that uh, cavernous area between the breasts <laughs> the dip between the breasts uh, if you don't do that you got material you're just going to stretch over it from point to point of the breast uh, now i'm just making an outline with my fray check because i want to cut off some of this excess material and i'm making an outline of what i think i will need to turn under and i'll let that dry and then i can trim off this excess material and be a whole lot easier to work with and I'm leaving a lot of extra on the ends because I know I'm going to end up having to fold that back and make a neat end of the uh, closure for a closure. Okay. Now, the one thing I want to make sure I do as I'm working on this is that I get that strap in the middle, that uh, back strap in the middle of the fabric. So I'm going to just go ahead and glue that down and then I'll work on the rest because there's going to be some folds in this material because you're, you're putting a flat piece of fabric over. A molded uh, curved piece so I don't want to start you know folding things and then get to where the uh, those ends are kind of like off to one side and wouldn't cover it so I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna go ahead and, and cut out the skirt out of this beautiful floral material it's kind of a it's got a little bit of a fuzzy like a felt uh, where the where those flowers are so it's really kind of a, a cool piece of fabric I found it at a thrift store and Bought the whole bundle for like a dollar or something. So what I'm doing here is I'm measuring from her waist to her feet. It's about eight inches. Uh, she's taller than like a Barbie. And then I'll add another probably couple of inches uh, just to make sure that I don't run out of fabric. Now I'm using this piece of thread to measure around her waist um, just to, uh, to make sure that I know the basic shape and size as I'm measuring the length of the skirt around here. You know me, I love me a circular skirt. I don't know why, because I hate hemming them, but this one actually hemmed up pretty good. So I'm going to put this circle uh, that designates her waist size in the middle of the piece of the fabric where I feel like I've got enough room all the way around to cut a circle. So I'm going to measure eight inches and then some, probably another, actually two inches. Uh, but right well no it, it was right at eight inches but a little bit below that because I always measure a little extra and then I'm making a cut at that point and I'm cutting through one layer of the fabric not two because I'm only going to need one layer so I'm uh, cutting out at uh, sort of fourths around there measuring from the outside of that string which will be the outside of her waist the uh, you don't want to measure from the center because that's not really where where the fabric will be 
and you don't want to cut that hole too big because you know you're going to uh, usually you're going to have a seam so you got to keep that in mind so what I do is as I cut the fourth so then I cut uh, a round piece or curved piece from one cut to the next and then to get it symmetric what I do is I start by cutting uh, a little hole in the center I just take it and fold it and cut off like a half circle that designates where the waist is and that helps me keep the center of the fabric as you can see there there's my hole it's not too big her waist is a lot bigger than monster high though all right and then I'm gonna take it and fold it uh, in halves then I'm gonna fold it in fourths and then I'm gonna fold it in eighths and then I'm going to cut in a curved motion the bottom of the skirt. I'm not cutting it straight across, I'm cutting, cutting it in a curve. Now this will give me pretty much a circle. Yay! Now there's a little few pieces here and there you need to trim off to make it even, completely even, but that's, that's kind of how I do a circular skirt. It's kind of, kind of easy to do. All right, and now I'm going to cut up where I want the center to be. It's going to be open in the front. So I'm just going to cut right up here all the way from the hem to the waist. So this will be sort of an overskirt that's going to hang around a skirt made out of this green metal metallic uh, figure. But I want it to be real flowy, so like if she was dancing, it'll be, you know, flowing out around her. And now, uh, as usual, you know, I, like I said, I don't use a pattern. So I'm going to cut out the skirt shape. I want it to be fairly fitted, but I want to make sure that I leave enough on either side for the seams. So this is the shape that I cut out. And it's always big, you know, easier to cut it bigger than too small. So, you know, I've got plenty of room. You can always sew it, sew the seam up some if it's not, if it's not small enough. And I just want to measure it against her and make sure that I've got enough room on either side for the seams. And I've got enough down at the bottom for the hem. And it looks like it's a pretty good shape. And now what I'm going to do is put the two right sides together. And I'm going to sew the sides. But before I do that, like I said, this phrase. So I'm going to put fray check all around the edges. And I really wish I could do it that fast because it's kind of a pain in the butt. But this is speeded up, so <laughs> I didn't do the bottom because that was cut on the salvage, so it, it won't ravel. I'm going to put that aside so the fray check can dry before I sew it. And I'm going to work on this bralette some more because that one piece that I glued has, has dried. And what I'm going to do now is go ahead and fold over the edges so that, that I can glue them over. And the top part is not too bad. It's not going to, I want the top of the bralette to not be folded in uh, or had, have a gather in it, you know. I'm going to have to do that on the bottom to take up the excess fabric that's covering the cone shape. But for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and fold down the top part as well as the top and bottom on the sides. And then all I'll, all I'll have left is the bottom part, which will be the hardest part because I'll have to kind of manipulate the fabric. I mean, I kind of see fabric a lot of times almost like clay. I mean, you can kind of mold it with things you do with your fingers and with thread and, you know, pulling this in or letting this out. Um, you really can kind of mold it. So that's really how I'm looking at this, how I'm going to mold this to give me the outside shape that I want. And... You know, I think a lot of times, even though you have a, a fold there, like a, a dart sort of look, as long as you've got it symmetrical, where you've got one on both sides, people just go, oh, well, that's the way it's supposed to be made, you know. But uh, if you had had it looking different on each side, it would probably look messy and, you know, like it wasn't supposed to be that way. All right, so now I've got the top and the sides folded over. Now I'm going to start working on the bottom. And one of the things I'm trying to avoid here is having a having it come to a real point over the nipple area. I don't want it to look like 
you know, Madonna's bra with the, the, the extreme point on it. I'm trying to sort of ease that. So instead of having one gather or one sort of dart like uh, joining, I'm going to try to press it into two. So I'm putting some glue underneath the fabric onto the, the tape that's going to be underneath the fabric. And I want to start with the center part because I want to make sure that I get that part done so that none of the tape is showing. You know, that's where those two pieces come together. So I want to make sure that I have that in place before I start folding over the other parts. So I'm just making sure I've got it stretched and that's glued down nicely. And then we're going to glue the back area where that will fold over on top of. And that will hold it in place while I do the rest of the bra. Now in between this, when I'm not on camera, I'm holding this down so that it'll dry. This took me from about 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock in the morning till 2. I had about two hours of film, a little over two hours, two and a half hours, and I trimmed it down to uh, 50 some minutes. Uh, it's a pretty long video, but if you get tired, you know, take a break, come back later. All right, so now this is where I'm doing the little darts or folds, and like I said, I'm trying to avoid having that be such a pronounced point, so I'm trying to do it in two folds instead of just one. And it's just a matter of you know, putting the glue in there and then pressing it where you want it with your fingers. It kind of wants to go into one because that, you know, it's a bigger area, but you're just going to have to hold it. And this is how I spend a lot of time when I'm, I'm gluing things because E6000 dries pretty fast. I mean, it probably dries 10 times faster than like Elmer's, so that's good. Um, it's a good glue to work with for these sorts of things, but do you just still have to have a certain amount of, of glue time? And it really needs overnight for it to be 100% uh, at its top strength. But while I'm working on these sorts of things, I can usually get it glued down to where I want if I just hold it for a few minutes. All right, I folded over the edges on the back of the bralette so that it's neat. And we're gonna fit it on her Put aluminum foil on her body just in case any glue was left on the bralette. And I've got a nice overlap there. That looks good. So I'm just going to cut a little tiny pieces of this Velcro. This is doll Velcro. It's a lot thinner than regular human Velcro. Uh, I like it because if you use the thicker Velcro, it makes the uh, gap there stick out. So... Um, this one's not quite as strong, so you lose a little bit in strength, but I think it's, it's good enough for doll, doll wear. I mean, you can sew these this on, but I find gluing, especially these little tiny pieces, is fine. You just got to make sure you get the right side, because it's kind of hard to tell on this thin stuff. So I put that one, you know, facing up, and then I'm going to put the other sides facing down. I usually put the fuzzy side down. On the bottom and then the stiffer side on the part coming down on top I don't know why just I don't know that there's a rule does anybody know if there's a rule for velcro all right so now in the skirt I'm gonna leave open down to where the hip starts to curve in that should leave a plenty of opening on the side for us to get it over her hips and when I made this video I was thinking I was gonna put a slit up one side uh, but you know with the skirt how it ended up looking i decided not to do that after i sewed it uh, so uh, at this point i'm just sewing that one side and leaving open that gap down to where the hip curved and that'll be our opening to be able to get it over her hips when we put it on the doll and while i'm doing that i just want to take another measure see where the waist is i had a little bit too high of a waist uh, so I had to turn that down a little bit more. So I'm um, sewing off camera because I got a little sewing stand. It's a whole lot easier. So I'm just trying to explain to you what I did. 
Um, I'm going to hem it. This is the bottom, so I'm going to hem it uh, on the next go round. I'll turn down the top and hem the waistline also. And uh, then uh, I think here I'm sort of saying that I'm going to leave open a gap for this for the uh, side seam but then I decided not to do that and the other thing I'm going to do is hem the edges of that opening where the uh, where I'll have I'll put probably some velcro there so I'll turn that back and hem it the width of the seam like that and that'll make a nice looking opening on the side so I've done all that I've hemmed it I've sewed up the other side seam uh, hemmed back the opening and hemmed the waistband. So that skirt is pretty much finished other than putting on Velcro. So let's give it a turnout and see how it fits. And fits pretty good. And like I said, you can always go back and take up the seams if it was too big or whatever. But I've got enough that it overlaps a little bit in the waist, but not enough, you know, to make a huge gap. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue and cut off another piece of my little dress, doll dress Velcro. A little bit bigger than the one I used on the bralette. And we'll just glue that down. And let it dry. That ends up working pretty well. You can do that however you want. Some people like buttons or whatever, but I think the Velcro works pretty good. And especially since this is going to be under the other overskirt, that floral skirt, uh, it really doesn't matter as long as it's, you know, neat and uh, closes up as, as much as we need it to close up because we don't want it to be too bulky underneath the floral skirt. So I've put the one piece on the top, and this one I'm putting facing downward. Once again, I use the fuzzy on the bottom and the stiffer piece on the top. Just making sure I get the right sides glued down. <laughs> I did do that one time. I glued the wrong side down. I kept thinking, why is this not sticking? That was because I had the wrong side glued down. <laughs> All right, and so we want to let that dry before we try to use it. Um, if you try to you know, put it together and then pull it. It'll just pull the Velcro off if it's not completely dry. All right, so the next step is we want to hem this overskirt. And it's going to be one continuous hem because we're hemming up the front sides as well as the bottom there. So I'm going to go off camera and do that. So we got the waist hemmed, the front opening hemmed, and the bottom hemmed. And I'm using the same green thread that sort of matches the skirt. So that's my opening, but I, want, I don't want it to go all the way around the waist. I want it to come kind of to the sides because I want the green skirt underneath to show. And uh, to attach this at the waist, I want to use ribbon. And I had these ribbons on hand already from previous projects. And so this is kind of how I work. You know, I have stuff on hand. It, I just uh, have a really good sense of color, so I just kind of hold things up and... You know, that went with the skirt part, but not with the green skirt that went with the floral. So I decided I didn't want to use that. Now, the floral skirt has some light blue in it, but I didn't think it went great with that, although it wasn't too bad. So I kind of put that aside as a maybe. Uh, then I had this uh, really kind of Christmas green <laughs> color, which really didn't go too much with that outfit. So that didn't work. And uh, you see I use pins to keep my ribbon. I think that works so much better than tape, by the way. If you, if you have ribbons hanging around, just stick a pin in it. It's so much easier, and it doesn't come undone. I also had this darker blue, and yuck, that didn't go at all. So that, that definitely is not going to work. And then the last piece that I had left, which is the one that I end up using, is sort of a teal. I think it's a little bit bluer than the skirt which is is a more green color but I thought that it blended well with the skirt and the uh, overskirt because it does have that sort of blue tinge and I was you know still considering the baby blue but 
And I thought, nah, I, th I really think that other color is going to be better. Now, I'm not going to tie it at the waist because I don't want to take away from the fullness of the skirt. And I think a bow tied in the front would, like a, a big bow that you just tie. So I'm going to just do a, a closure where this ribbon comes around. And it's going to have a, a ribbon doodad. I don't know what I want to call that. But it is going to have a ribbon doodad on top of it to give it a nice look. But I decided I don't, I don't want to tie it. So we're going to use the ribbon and, with some Velcro and uh, we'll make it work. So I'm going to cut a piece of this uh, that's big enough to go around her waist plus some little extra because I have to glue under the sides. So I'm just seeing, you know, near, measuring there with my eyeballs how long I need the, the uh, ribbon to be. And then I put a gathering thread in the waist because, like I said, I don't want the uh, skirt to go all the way around. And I want to give it some gathers in the back to pull it together back there. And then it won't be quite so full in the front. And then I just tie, I tie off the ends once I have it gathered. That way the gather doesn't come out. It's a little trick you can do. Once you get it pulled to where you want it to be, just tie it couple knots in it and then you can cut those long threads too because they kind of they kind of annoy me and get in the way and uh, just trimming off some of the extras there with some scissors that have become dull I love these scissors so I have to get them sharpened I love that they have a really sharp tip and uh, they've been pretty good for so long but I, I, I do cheat and cut other things to fabric with them I have to say so it's my bad all right, so I'm going to fold the edges of the front of the skirt over a little bit. So it, like I said, I don't want it to uh, cover up the front of the underskirt. And then I'm going to sew the ribbon to the top of the waist where I have it gathered. And I'm going to do that on the machine and put one seam in it and then I did go back a little bit later and put another seam in it just so that it laid down flat because it's a little bit wide and when you pulled it, it it tended to flip up all right so I've got that on there and that's where I want the sides to be and now what I'm doing here is measuring because I want like I said to have a fold over I'm going to cut off the excess and just leave enough so that I can fold the edges on either side down and glue them and then one will just uh, flop over on top of the other one and we'll put some Velcro on it. And that'll give it more of a sleek look. You could tie it, you know, maybe a little bow off to the side. Wouldn't be too bad, especially if it wasn't a very thick ribbon. Lots of things you could do with this. I'm just giving you some ideas. This turned into a little bit longer project than I anticipated, but I decided to go ahead and film the whole thing at one time instead of doing a series because I kind of like how I could explain, you know, how things went together as I went along. And uh, if you got, you know, an hour to spare, maybe right before you go to bed, maybe it'll put you to sleep or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, hopefully you'll get through the whole thing. Maybe not one session and then in two sessions. So I'm just putting some glue down and folding over about an inch or so of that ribbon and uh, pressing it down. And that'll be what, what we use to keep that skirt on. Now I'm going to make a little, um, like I said, doodad to put on, on the front of that to sort of give it a finished look. And I'm cutting uh, two points on this ends of each of these ribbon. It's hard to see how I'm cutting it right there, but I'm going to hold it up in front of a piece of white paper in a minute, and I'll show you what it looks like. So I cut that about an inch long, and I did the two cutouts on either side. And here you can see that's how it looks. See the two points on either side like that. That's going to go right on the front of that fold over. I'm going to put some fray check on the parts that I cut, as this ribbon can fray also. But I don't want to just have this ribbon be the only thing up front. I want it to sort of be like a, a not, I don't want to say a buckle, but anyway, what I'm doing is I'm taking a piece of this ribbon and 
just folding it over into a round piece and gluing it together and then we'll glue it down on the front of my other ribbon doodad all right so we're just going to glue that on there that looks like the right size so if you put the glue um, on the width of it it'll hold it down and it won't stick out so much which is what I want I want it to be sleek I want it to be fairly flat and I'm going to put some glue over on the doodad. You like my fashion terms? This is a doodad. <laughs> and uh, along with the glue that's already on the round, round ribbon piece. And this will glue down pretty well. I didn't want it to, I didn't want the top of the round piece to be glued down. I just want it to be, to lay flat. So because it didn't have any glue on it, when I press it down, it'll pop back up, which is great. That's exactly what I want it to do. I want it to be flat and glued down to the edges, but have the roundness to the front of it. So let me um, zoom in on this so you can kind of get a little bit pic more of a picture at uh, close up. So you can see how that looks with the rounded piece of ribbon. I did end up putting some crystals on it a little bit later, I'll show you, but, because, uh, you know, we got to have some bling, we got to have some bling, okay, so, we got the skirt, we got the ribbon, we've, we folded over the edges, so now we're ready to apply the doodad to the front, and just sort of measuring it to make sure that I have it the size that I want before I glue it down. So I'm going to put the glue on the top of the side that folds over on top. You know, I didn't think about it at the time. I should have gone ahead and put the Velcro in when I on it when I had it without the doodad, but it ended up working out okay anyway. All right, so we got our doodad on. That'll cover up uh, the part where it, it folds over. And now what I'm going to do is uh, put the pieces of Velcro on, on this. And then I'll have to let it dry for a while before I, before I actually use it. Alright, so I'm putting the fuzzy side on the underneath piece. Use a little bit longer piece. And then the stiffer side on the back of the side that folds over. And we'll set her aside now and let that dry this is the bra bralette i'm going to call it bralette and what i'm going to do now is apply some crystals because like i said i kind of got this image like from the victoria's secret where you know at christmas they have the fantasy bra that's worth like ten thousand or twenty thousand dollars because it's got all these you know real jewels on it and they only make i think one a year and uh, so, anyway, uh, I think it fits her pretty well, uh, but I want to take it off to to do that because I'm going to be using glue and I, I don't want to get glue on her or whatever. So, um, I'm just going to start putting little dabs of E6000 and I've got a variety of, of uh, Swarovski crystals that I have. I, I always have some on hand because I buy some for a project and then I have a few left, but I've got colors that I try to coordinate with the colors that are in the overskirt. So sort of a gold color and uh, some greens and have one uh, crystal that is like an opal, kind of opalish white color. I'm going to use that and a little light blue. So starting in the middle, I've got one sort of uh, medium sized, sort of like a topaz, golden topaz kind of color. And I'm pulling off any extra because I don't want them to show from underneath after I glue them. So I put that topaz kind of gold color in the center. And I'm going to start from there. And just kind of adding, adding them as I think fits them best. I'm going to speed this up because this video is so freaking long already. Uh, basically, I'm just applying them, and I'll show you how it looks at the end. I did use, like I said, I used green and some light blue and some opal white and 
that uh, kind of topazy color and there was one that was sort of like a I don't know maybe more of a copper color but I thought all of those went well with the skirt and I was pleased with with the result so speeding this up just a little bit now I'm applying some sort of emerald green ones and that's the baby blue one I thought that's a pretty color it's really pretty I think it uh, that green offsets it really nicely I love this green color I've been wanting to make something out of these two pieces of fabric for a while and you know it just takes the right inspiration like I said I thought it it's sort of exotic and I feel like she's a little bit exotic looking to me uh, I named her Karina although the doll is is named Zara Wade I named her Karina and uh, that sort of reminded me then of Karina Smirnoff who's on Dancing with the Stars and then I started thinking ooh merengue and cha-cha and Copacabana I can just see this place in Cuba you know that's back in the 30s you know where they people used to fly down there to the nightclubs before the revolution and they had all these cool nightclubs a little smoky air you know people drinking their martinis and women and really fabulous beautiful flowing evening gowns and dressing you know and then doing these dances with the sensual beat to them um so i I had that vision in my head as I was making this dress, and I know there's still some places like that, maybe maybe in Cuba, maybe not, I don't know, maybe in New York or some other places, Argentina, but uh, I know there's somewhere where she could wear this dress and go, and go dancing and have a really good time, so uh, wherever, I'm happy. I don't even know, Copacabana, it's, it's in your imagination anyway, so, right? I would play the song, but it's copyrighted by Barry Manilow, so just play it in your head while you're watching this. All right, so just about pretty much got that finished, and I uh, really love the way that looks. I'm not going to put them all the way around. I just want to put them uh, like up at the top and then right at the bottom. That's going to show the most because of the way I'm going to make this dress. It's going to kind of cover up the sides anyway. All right, so we got that, and I mean, you know, risque, you could actually just finish with this and say that's an outfit, especially like with a short skirt in today's world, that could be just an outfit, but um, I like this beautiful floral overskirt, and we're going to finish it with that because I like that elegant look. All right, I did put, like I said, a couple of those emerald crystals on either side of my doodad to kind of finish off that look it's such an extravagant look too she doesn't even need jewelry so for shoes I'm going to use these uh, pair of monster high shoes that I have um, and they actually do fit this doll so what I'm doing is carving off everything except the base I just want to have use of the base I don't want to have to make a pair of shoes which I could, but this video is so long. <laughs> that would make it twice as long. But you could. You can make your own pair of shoes. Like I've got several videos showing you how to make your own shoes. But for this, I'm just going to carve this off. And I know you're all waiting for that moment because, you know, I'm carving it the way they tell you not to, where you put your thumb behind it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, like you said, that that fits fine. It's going to work for her. That actually fits perfect. Got the same size foot as Monster High. See? Yeah. Is everybody waiting for it to happen? Mm-hmm. I know. I know. So if you're doing this, be careful. There we go. Yep. Right into the thumb. And it bled for a long time. I had to stop the camera and just go off and hold it for a long time all right so we're back after that accident and uh, I did both of the shoes um, as usual I get that glue on me every time I open it that gold glue so I had to get that off and then I'm going to put uh, two coats of this gold paint on the shoes 
but she's going to have to have these, you know, glitzy shoes to go with her outfit. And I didn't show putting the two coats on on the film. I did one coat. So it and it dries really fast. So like, you know, you could dry, put the top on and you kind of kind of lay it down and paint the bottom part. It's already pretty much dry. Just don't try to put it on too thick. So I painted those and let those dry. I came back a little bit later and put a second coat on and, and that looked good. So we got our shoes painted and I'm going to show you how I'm going to attach them now that all we have is the bottom. I'm going to use ribbon, the same ribbon that we used for the waistband. And I'll make a little round piece like that. But I have to measure it against her foot. And I just want it to go over the toe part. So I'm measuring it on her foot. Then I'll trim off the excess piece of ribbon and glue that together. And I got that little round circle. And I'll do the same thing for both sides and set those aside and let them dry. And then we'll attach them to the shoe. And I did end up uh, cutting off a little bit of that, you know, this ribbon, it's clear like in three strips, you know, if you look at it. So I could have actually cut that before. I didn't know how it was going to look once I got it on her foot, so I didn't do that. Um, but once I got, got it on her, I did end up uh, trimming off one of those sections. So two was plenty. And now I'm taking one of those sections I cut out. Like you said, like I, I'm, I was just saying, there's like three sections in this, so... I cut out one section, making sure I had the thick part on either side, and then cut out another section the same length. This is how I'm going to attach the back part. I'm taking that and folding it over a piece of the uh, whole thick ribbon, and I'm going to glue those two pieces together. We're going to attach that to the back of the heel, and then that uh, ribbon will the long parts of the ribbon will tie around her ankle. All right, so got that folded over and I just am gluing those two small pieces together there. And I did it so that the ribbon would slide through there easily in case I needed to adjust it. So it's a loop at the top with the ribbon through it. And we'll set that aside and let it dry. Do the same thing on another piece for the other shoe. The exact same process, just gluing those two small pieces together and letting them dry. All right, so we've let those dry and uh, let the shoes dry after two coats. It turned out really nicely and they fit. I like the texture on the sides of the shoe too. I think they look really cool. They add a lot without adding like jewels or whatever because she's got plenty of jewels on her bralette. So now I'm just going to put glue on the toe, inside toe of the shoe there. And then we're going to glue that round piece of ribbon that we glued together earlier onto that. And that's what's going to hold her toes in the shoe. Let's pop that on there and you can press it down because this ribbon is springy and even though I pressed it down that top part of the ribbon didn't stick to the bottom part. And then we'll let that dry. I want to make sure that's good and dry before we put them on our foot or they'll or it'll fall off. Then we're going to take that uh, ribbon that we put uh, the small strips on and we're going to just glue that to the back of the heel. You know I thought about putting um, my dogs are in here sorry about that I thought about putting like a row of the green crystals down that you can still do that I might still do that but I didn't think about it while I was filming this but now that I'm looking at it, I thought ooh, that would be kind of pretty you know they would flash as she's dancing across the floor so just put like three of the three of those small green right down the the back of that ribbon where it's on the heel all right so that's uh gonna have to dry so uh, we can attach the ribbon to the to the ankle just we'll tie a bow in it around the ankle I'll show you a picture at the very end of how the shoes ended up looking 
but for now they had to sit aside and dry. Now uh, for the top part I want to have some sort of gathered pieces that come from the, the flowered skirt up the sides kind of under her arms and then tie behind her neck in a halter type thing in such a way as to frame the bralette. Okay, so I started out with these two pieces that I felt were long enough to go up and tie behind her neck and I cut them a little bit wider on the portion that would be uh, on her sides and a little bit narrower as they would be up around her waist, up around her neck so I could tie them. And then I'm going to gather the bottom of that, attach it to that skirt, and then have it come up and tie around her neck like that. That's the plan. That's the plan. So I ended up just hemming it, and then um, I did run a gathered thread along the bottom there to pull that to gather it, and then attached it to the skirt. So that when I wrap the skirt around it, then all you had to do is just tie that behind her neck. So I tied, uh, sewed that on the sewing machine, uh, the gathered part down at the bottom, just on the edges there, right where the ribbon ends, meets and ends on either side. So they're right at the sides and kind of almost in her back. I mean, they kind of come up around from the back. All right. So I've sewed those on. It looks like that underneath. That's the back side of the skirt. All right, so we're going to put that on her. That thing keeps turn her other skirt keeps twisting around. Now you'll see once I get this on her, so we've got the uh, doodad closure there in the front. Now you're going to see it. The part that comes up around her body worked fine. That part actually looked good. Um, I was happy with that. But the part that I had sewed to tie behind her neck was just too bulky. So this is exactly how I wanted it to look. Exactly. It really came out perfect the way I wanted it to. In the front. <laughs> it looks beautiful. But uh, when you turn it around, you know, that bulky tie just really took away from the back part. I didn't like it. Now I could have cut that down more and made the strips uh, thinner. You know, that could have worked. I could have cut them shorter and flipped them over and Velcroed them together. But uh, what I ended up doing is cutting off the portion of that that was the tie. So right at where it came to her neck. I folded it over about a fourth of an inch. And then using needle and thread, I put a gathering, I ran a gathering thread through it. And then I attached the ribbon, the same ribbon that I used around her waist, I attached that to the top of those two pieces that come up around her bodice. And I just, I think that ended up looking better. I, I think, you know, I, even that was a little bit big, but um, I can always trim that off. I just think that ended up being a much better closure, much sleeker looking. So there she is. There's our finished doll outfit. Everything except I felt there was something missing on her hair. I felt like if she was in Cuba dancing, she would have some flowers in her hair. So uh, I decided to come up with a way to put some flowers on one side of her head. Now the hair on this doll is sort of like not really where you can like take it down or stick something in it. It's kind of almost, not almost glued, but almost like super hairsprayed. It's not going to move. So uh, I was going to have to put something that would stick through the ponytail at the top. So I took a piece of uh, just floral wear, uh, wire and a piece of the ribbon and folded the ribbon over the floral wire and then attached these uh, silk well, not silk, they're satin rosettes to the front of the ribbon. Like that, and I'll let that dry. So you can see like how slick her hair is. 
uh, except for the ponytail. That You can't stick anything in there. So I'm just sticking it through the very top part of the loose part of the ponytail and then bending the wire together so that it hangs down on one side of her head. And to me, that really finished off the look. It needed to be flowers and not jewels because the bralette is is the focal point here and, and it has the jewels and I didn't really want to take away from that. So I'm going to give you some still shots now. We're coming to the end of this video. Can you believe it? 50 minutes. Ah, thanks for sticking with me. I love how she turned out. She's so beautiful. And now I kind of like these fashion royalty dolls more than I did. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? And there's our shoes. As you can see, I did trim off one section of that uh, ribbon across the toes. And her nicely painted toenails are showing. And there's how it looks from the side. I love the way those shoes turned out. And I think they accent the dress really well. They're not too flashy to take away. And there she is getting into the merengue. Getting ready to start a cha-cha. <laughs> oh... I wish I was dancing somewhere in the tropics in this dress. And I wish I looked like that. Don't you? <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun doing it. I had a lot of fun making something for this doll that's been naked for over a year. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, Jackie, and it met your expectations. And uh, next, uh, got something really different for you next week. Let me keep it as a surprise. Now here's a little special subscribe video for Christmas. Merry Christmas and subscribe. Bye.